So hopefully you get yourself a chance to try these two questions first. And now let's look at this one. We're going to solve 14 minus 5x minus x squared is less than or equal to 0. Well, it's good because we have a 0 on one side already. But then this is also kind of strange because right here, this is not in the standard form, right? It's okay that we can just go ahead and factor the way it is right here. Or if you would like, you can go ahead, rearrange it, and factor it. Up to you. I'm just going to factor it the way it is right here. And I'm not going to factor out any negative or whatnot. So let me show you guys, of course, with the tic-tac-toe method, 14 minus 5x minus x squared. And I'm just going to factor it as it is. To get negative x squared, I need to have negative x and pass the x, right? And then to get 14, I know 2 times 7 is 14. And let me put down 2 right here and 7 right here. How do I know if this is right? Well, 2 times x is 2x, negative x times 7, that will give me negative 7x. And when we combine 2x and negative 7x, we do get negative 5x. So we got our factors. The first one is 2 minus x, so let me put that down right here. And for the second one is 7 plus x, right? And this is still less than or equal to 0. And now, what are the numbers that we care? For the first parentheses, what do I care about? I care about positive 2. And then for the second parentheses, what do I care about? Negative 7. Okay, you can work this out real quick. You can do this in your head up to you. You know, if you plug in 2 into this x, the whole thing will be 0, so that's good. If you plug in negative 7 in here, this will be 0. That's good. So, you can also work it out. Let me put it down real quick. 2 minus x, if you set this to be 0, what you can do is, you can just add x on both sides so that you can see 2 is equal to x, x is equal to 2. That's one of the numbers that we care. For the second one, I'm just put down 7 plus x is equal to 0, and then minus 7 minus 7, cancel this out and I get x is equal to negative 7. Therefore, that's the two numbers that we care. And let's go ahead and draw our number line. And be sure, we put on the smaller number toward the left. Negative 7, it's smaller. So let me mark it right here, negative 7. And for 2, let me just put it down here. We care about these numbers. Do we want to include them? though? Yes, we do because right here we have the equal sign originally, right? So at negative 7, I'm going to use a closed circle. Likewise, for 2, we also want to include it as well. And now pick a number that's less than negative 7. Let me say it's negative 8. So these are the test value. Plugging negative 8 into this x and x here, we will see we have 2. Minus the x is negative 8. And we are just going to be, this is the parentheses, and we multiply by 7 plus negative 8, like that. So for the first parentheses, this is pretty much just the same as 2 plus 8, which is 10. And then for the second one, this is pretty much the same as 7 minus 8, which is negative 1. 10 times negative 1 is negative 10, and is this less than or equal to 0. Yes, it is. And what do we do? Well, we're just going to take this as part of our answer, right? This interval is going to be in our answer. And then for the second part right here, let's just pick a number between negative 7 and 2. Well, we can use 0. 0 is in between these two numbers, right? So I'm going to plug in 0 into this x and that x, and we will have 2 minus 0 times 7 plus 0, and you see this is just 2 times 7, and that's 14. Is 14 less than or equal to 0? No, it's not. That means we leave this, okay? We don't do anything with that. At the end, I'm going to pick a number bigger than 2. Let me use 9. Just to emphasize, you can pick any number as long as it's bigger than 2. Plugging 9 into this x and that x, we will have 2 minus 9 times 7 plus 9. For the first parentheses, we will have negative 7.
for the second parentheses, we will have 16. And negative 7 times 16. This is going to give me negative 112. And is this less than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. So I'm going to take this as the part of the answer already. So we're done with the graph, and now we can just write down the inequality and also the interval notation. For the first one here, that means we have x is less than or equal to negative 7, right? This is the first inequality, or we also have the second one. x is bigger than or equal to positive 2. So this right here is it for the inequality. Finally, for the interval notation, for the first one, it's all the way to the left, right? So it's negative infinity with the parentheses right here, up to negative 7 with the square bracket because we are including negative 7. Union because we have another one, and for this one is from 2 to positive infinity. For 2, we include it, so square bracket, and for infinity, it's always parentheses. That's it. And one more example. Okay, let's look at this one. We are going to solve x squared greater than 16. Well, of course, I'm going to show you guys what's wrong first, because this right here is also one of the popular ones that people just tend to do the following. So, once again, this is the wrong way to do it. If you look at x squared that's greater than 16, it seems like we can just take the square root on both sides and cancel, cancel. And maybe some people will say this is x is greater than square root of 16 is 4. This is not correct. And if you're wondering why this is not correct, it's because of the plus minus. If you put on plus minus, this is still not correct. Seriously, you are going to use the number line and find the numbers that we care and test out each interval. So now, let's see. I'm going to do this by factoring. We have x squared greater than 16, right? To factor, be sure we have one side equal to 0. So let me minus 16 on both sides. So that way, we can get x squared minus 16, and that's greater than 0. How can we factor this out? Well, it's the difference of two squares. So we know we can do x minus 4. And let me, yeah, x minus 4 times x plus 4. And that's greater than 0, right? What are the numbers that we care? For the first one, we care about positive 4. For the second one, we care about negative 4, right? And now, number line in action. Let me put down negative 4 first, right here. And positive 4 here. And now let's go ahead and ask yourself, we care about these numbers, but do we want to include them? No, because originally there is no equal sign. Therefore, open circle, open circle. And now let's go ahead and test out the intervals. Pick a number less than negative 4. Well, let me use negative 5. And this is the test value. Plugging negative 5 into here and here, and let's work it out. We will have negative 5 minus 4 times negative 5 plus 4. And we will see this is just negative 9 times negative 1. And negative 9 times negative 1, that's positive 9. And this is, of course, greater than 0. That means this is a part of the answer. And now let's do the same thing for the second one. Pick a number in between of negative 4 and 4. Let me use 0. Plug it into here, we are up to you. Let me just do it consistently with the factor D4. Plug in here, we have 0 minus 4 times 0 plus 4. This is negative 4, and this is positive 4. I know I'm showing you guys all the steps. That's why it seems pretty long. For many of you guys, I know you guys can just do the computation in your head. It's okay too. But anyways, negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. Is this greater than 0? No, so not answer, right? At the end, right here, let me just pick 5 and plug in 5 in here. 5 minus 4 times 5 plus 4. This is 1, and this is 9, and this is 9, of course, and of course 9 is greater than 0. That means this is also a part of the answer. Finally, this right here is x less than negative 4. There's no equal because it's an open circle, because the original says so. 
and we also have the other piece so let's put on or if this is x is greater than 4 interval notation for the first one negative infinity to negative 4 parentheses right because we're not including it union the second one is parentheses 4 to positive infinity as you can see this is how you can get the correct answer and if you do it this way you really have no way to tell how to switch the inequality or what not right so this is it hopefully these two videos helped you Thank you.